Hello, welcome to another episode of Ask the Doulas. I am Alyssa Venaclos, co-owner, postpartum doula, and today we're talking to Katie Kimball again of Kitchen Stewardship. Hi, Katie. Hey, Alyssa. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we are going to talk today. We talked to you last time about having kids in the kitchen, but we want to kind of shift gears and talk about how do we get good eating habits started early for our kids and then get some tips from you on how to do it, especially through those toddler years when they seem to be picky and hate everything you put in front of them. How do you deal with that? (laughs) I guess, where would you tell a parent to start? Well, so the big word that I've picked up, I have four kids and so I've been a mom for 13 years, kind of been around the block with this. (laughs) And I was so stressed about feeding my child when he, like when my first was a baby, I remember nearly karate chopping my husband's uncle in the arm because he had like some cool whip on his finger and was going to offer it to my (laughs) seven uncle. I was like, no, you can't like, no, right. That was going to literally kill him. Right. I'm not a fan of cool whip, but I could have chilled out a little more. Um, I did a great, really informative to me interview with um, a naturopath who specializes in kids nutrition a few years back and she said actually the most current research shows that it's it's the most important for kids palates and mouths and bodies to be exposed to the widest variety of foods possible even before six months even before seven months like when we're usually starting to feed at six months so just like allowing them to smell or just little licks little tastes of kind of everything you're eating it's almost like an inoculation it's almost like a an inoculation to the world where they'll be less likely to get allergies and here again 13 years ago when my youngest was a baby we were told do not give them any highly allergenic foods until after one you know no peanuts till after two so right. we do what we can with what we know so that's the most current research actually is that we just kind of need to expose them to all sorts of foods and even up until 12 months the function of the sitting up kind of eating with a spoon or on a high chair tray is mostly just exposure and exploration. And so that takes a lot of pressure off mom. It's not about um, calories. It's not about nutrition. They're, they're getting that from the breast milk or formula they're drinking. Right. Yeah. I love the word exploration because, you know, around that four to six month mark, that's really all they're doing is exploring. And my daughter, before she wanted to eat solid foods would lick, you know, I would give her like little tastes of soup or whatever it was out off my finger and she would love it. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's such a great tip for, for parents with babies. Just let them try it. See what happens. They're not chewing. They're not going to choke. Yeah, so I'm so I'm not a huge proponent of like baby food, especially the cereal, because there yeah. isn't much nourishment in right. that. So why are we pushing it so hard? But really, just putting you know little mushy things or fingerable things on the tray and letting them explore. As long as everything is whole foods, mm-hmm. I don't think you can go wrong. Now, no added sugars, of course, right? We don't right. want to do food coloring. We don't, you know. But if it's little pieces of avocado, little pieces of ground beef or a bean, you know, a little black bean that you mush under your thumb so that it's not too round. There's so many soft foods that are just just soft or that you can cook to be soft and the kids can can just explore. So that's, you know, that's kind of a a nice load off of a mom's mind that chill is the word of the day (laughs) when it comes to feeding your babies. So what do you do then when you've been, oh, I've done such a great job. My kid will eat anything. And then they turn to, and what the heck happened? Oh my gosh. It happens to almost every family. And the good news is it's completely developmentally appropriate because at age two to three, the kids are realizing that they're separate from their parents and oh my goodness, they have opinions, you know, and they are, they're really testing their boundaries. So they're trying to figure out where my will ends and where my parents begin, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they're going to test that in every way they can, but especially especially when it comes to eating, sleeping, and pooping, because mm-hmm. those are the things we cannot force them to do. Right, right. <laughs> no matter how hard we try, much to parents' chagrin. And so, again, the good news is that you really kind of have to chill and realize that, that it's normal, totally normal for them to say no to something that they used to like, even if they liked it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and they say no to it today. They might like it again tomorrow. And so I, I often tell parents who are in that phase of, I, I think, two to five is what I call the picky eating phase. Is like you just have to be more stubborn and more persistent than your child until they turn six-ish. 
<laughs> yeah, my daughter just did that to me the other day. She's five, and she has loved uh, avocados and guacamole for years, and then all of a sudden she didn't. She told me last week, Mommy, I decided I like uh, avocados again. It is tough, and I and I think, I mean, the risk is if we give in, if you're like, oh, she doesn't like avocados or guacamole anymore, I just won't serve it ever. Right. Well, she, she probably never would have come back around to it, or the chances would be slim. So our job as parents is just to continue to serve good healthy foods you know obviously you have to be eating good healthy foods right but you know serving whole foods and a variety of fruits and vegetables and protein sources um and expecting that they will change i think in america especially unfortunately we fall into this terrible rut of feeding kids what they like and then complaining that they're not eating better Right. And it's like, well, that's because your expectations are this teeny tiny box of what they like, and they're not going to push out of that. So we've got to raise our expectations and realize, you know, that our 20-something-year-old child's palate is not going to be the same right. as our three-year-old's. Yeah, and so we're just going to continue to, you know, offer good things and feed them good things, and they can choose how much they eat and when they eat as long as we're not letting them feast on junk food outside of meals. We, we can win. We can win after they're in, like, first grade. They come around to all the green things. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's, it's like, gives us hope, right? Yes. Well, and it's funny that you say in America, because, you know, every time I go to a restaurant and you look at the kids' menu, there's always the same, like, five options. It's mac and cheese, it's a hot dog, it's a hamburger, it's a cheeseburger, you know, it, and it's all unhealthy. They don't have any good options. So I end up, like, having to split, like, order one healthy meal and split it with my daughter, um, and it, it is really frustrating when you're trying to have your children eat healthy, but every there's nothing, there's no healthy options on a kid's menu. Um, yes, and it's then, countercultural to yeah. feed our kids vegetables. So we have to be really young. We have to be tough about it and just be ready like we would anything for our kids, right? We've got to be ready to be the mama bear mm-hmm. and put up the fight. Right, right. And I have to ask all the time, do you have any vegetables that I could add instead of fries? Like, do you, and they'll look at me like, well, what kind of vegetables? I'm like, anything. <laughs> It's getting better. I yeah. have to say, like the pendulum is swinging in the right direction, and it's very exciting to watch and like push it as hard as I can. <laughs> well, you have created a PDF for us to help parents who maybe have had trouble with the process of getting their kids to eat um, healthy foods, and it's ten snacks your preschooler can make today. And tell them how, where where can we find it and what's on this, um, and maybe a couple of the you know a couple of the ten snacks that are on there. Sure thing. Well, you can download that for free at kidscookrealfood.com slash doulas. Doula, sorry, singular. Kidscookrealfood.com slash doula. Um, And the idea here is that one way to get kids to eat better, okay, because, again, they're testing those boundaries. One way to get those young preschoolers to eat better is to get them involved because when they get involved, whether it's growing food, you know, choosing it at the grocery store or farmer's market, planning a meal, preparing a meal, serving a meal, any involvement in any way helps them to feel connected to that food. And they're much, much more likely to try it joyfully or at least be open um, and having a better attitude at the meal. So we want to get those kids in the kitchen, you know, using tools. And so we teach them simple things like using a butter knife to slice bananas or make ants on a log um, and different ways to slice cheese. There's actually a homemade gelatin in there that uses 100% grape juice, um, which is still, I mean, not that that's health food, but it's way better than jello jello right. box. Um, and it's really fun. It's a really fun kind of activity for kids to make with an adult. So some of the recipes in there are totally like a three-year-old could do it pretty much start to finish. And then some are kind of a half and half, you know, fun thing for a kid to do with a parent. Yeah. I think that's a great tool. Um, you know, kids that age love, like you said, to be involved, but they're in a sense, they're kind of followers. They like to do what their friends are doing. They want to do what you're doing. And if they know that you're cooking and they've helped, um, they, see that as something that they want to they want to take part in it and they they will probably eat it or at least try it right they're more likely to try it yeah it totally increases your chances and you mean the pickier a child is and some some kids really have some processing issues where food maybe tastes you know so bold and vibrant to them that any new food is is nearly terrifying because they're afraid that it will overwhelm their senses and that's you know that's becoming more and more common and it's okay we can work within what our kids' bodies are giving us 
and it, it's still even even with like sensory processing disorder the goal is still continual exposure so a normal kid might need two or three or ten exposures to let's say broccoli you know a kid who's processing the senses a little different might need 50 or 100 it's a little bit of a longer game with wow. them, but it's still you know you have to really patient but, and that's not every kid that's just right. one that they're like so picky their tags are itchy they you know don't like any spicy foods or they like only really spicy foods this is kind of like the segment but the ones who are saying my kid is way pickier than that it's still the same process it's just a long time and continuing to be patient and expose them yeah it's a lot of patience for the parents then yes <laughs> Again, a daily struggle, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything that we didn't mention about tips for our toddlers? Mm, can we be consistent to keep the sugar out? That actually, so the, the grandma training is something I like to talk to parents about. Oh. It's not only grandmas, but some other adults in our lives, and sometimes us too. Like We just want to love our kids through suckers and popsicles. Yeah, And so it's been my kind of mission in life to train the grandma in our life who tries to do that, that it's not depriving a child if they don't know what it is. Right. Okay, so like candy is this secretive thing that my children have no idea exists for as long (laughs) as humanly possible because if they don't know it exists, it's not a battle, it's not a struggle, and it's certainly not a deprivation. They just think raspberries are the most amazing thing right. ever encountered, right? right? So a bowl of raspberries is as good to them as a bowl of gummy bears. So that's like that's a super thing. If you've got a really young child, just keep keep all the junk food as an unknown in their world. Yeah, I think that is a really hard, you know, we teach a grandparents class for other reasons, but Part of that is the struggle of they, it, this different generation doesn't understand that sugar is a bad thing. Um, they learn that sugar just rots your teeth. They have no idea that it does, you know, all the, the other bad things that it does to us internally and starting our kids off so young with sugar and everything, sugar cereals and then the candies and then, you know, everything. Um, they don't get it and it becomes a source of contention between the grandparents and the parents. Totally. Yeah, they think we're depriving our kids yeah. of the joy of, of life, right? right? And it's it's been fun actually watching my mother in law um, just see our kids. Like my third child literally asks for a, a bowl of feta cheese, like a container of feta cheese, to himself for his birthday from her, <laughs> and it cracks her up. But I think she's finally getting it. Like if you don't, <laughs> you don't let them know that the craziness is out there. They're happy. They're still super happy. And you can give them love in many other ways other than sugar, including through food, like, you know, real whole healthy food. Right. Oh, that's great advice. Well, tell our listeners again how to find this PDF. Yeah. So 10 snacks your preschooler can make today at kidscookrealfood.com slash doula. Free download. So excited to share that with you. I'm so excited to download it for my daughter and do it today. Good deal. All right. Well, thanks for visiting us again. Uh, Hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah. Again, you can find us at goldcoastdoulas.com. Email us at info at goldcoastdoulas. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and then you can listen to our podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, these moments are golden.